Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Good reminder from DDA today that uh, encrypted zip files do not encrypt the metadata that uh, comes uh, with the zip file. This includes uh, the file name itself, but also the CRC32 checksum. Now, these checksums, they're not cryptographic hashes. So sure, there are plenty of collisions or it would be easy to create a collision, but still it can help someone narrow down what file is likely included in the encrypted zip file. A reader also points out that, well, it's even better because you also have the original length of the file as part of the metadata available. So that can then further be used to narrow down a particular file that may be included. Probably the simplest way to avoid this issue is that you just zip the file twice. That way, the second time you zip the file, the metadata will just be the overall metadata for the first encrypted zip file and not the content of the first encrypted zip file. Well, and then I have an update to an update. Yesterday, I talked about Exim soon going to release an updated version of its mail server to fix the vulnerabilities being uh, made public by the Saturday initiative. Out of the six vulnerabilities, we have three fixed now. And the new version released today was 4.96.1. And there's also an upcoming version 4.97 that will fix these issues. The issues being fixed here are the more important one, including the auth out of bounds write vulnerability, which had a CVSS score of 9.8. The remaining vulnerabilities, there are some workarounds uh, that you can apply and uh, the XM advisory, I'll link to it again, it's same as yesterday, but they updated it, has some of these mitigation steps explained. And ARM today released a security advisory with uh, patches for a number of vulnerability in its uh, Mali GPU drivers. Uh, these uh, processors are typically used in mobile devices. So we're talking Android here, for example, the Samsung Galaxy series, Xiaomi, Redmi, and a couple other devices are affected by this vulnerability. In particular, tricky is CVE 2023-4. 4211, which is a privilege escalation vulnerability that's already been exploited in the wild. And in the past, we have often talked about malicious ads uh, being embedded in Google search results. Uh, of course, happened to some extent to Bing as well, but uh, with uh, Bing's smaller sort of share of the search engine market hasn't sort of really been covered much. Well, uh, with uh, Bing's new chatbot uh, becoming quite popular, apparently ads are being placed in Bing chatbot that are linking to malicious software. Malwarebytes has some examples here and for example, an ad for a network scanner apparently then leads uh, to malware. Just like any search or any system for that matter, if there's a good audience and an easy way to place links, even if it costs a little bit of money, well, it will be abused in order uh, to place malicious ads like this. In this particular case, it even looks like the attacker didn't even have to pay for the ads because they apparently used a compromised ad publisher's account. And one of the issues that keeps coming up uh, with AI is that in order to train these uh, large language uh, models, uh, a lot of companies will basically just uh, spider the web and uh, include the uh, arbitrary content they find without sort of any explicit uh, kind of approval uh, by the person who actually owns the rights to that content. Google now is proposing and implementing at least a partial solution here. They're introducing a new user agent, Google Dash Extended, that you can use in your robots.txt file to indicate that you would not like your content to be included 
in training large language models uh, like, uh, for example, Bart and Vertex AI. Now, this is not an actual user agent that will be used as the con is being spidered. The spidering will happen uh, by normal Google bots that already exist. But uh, by indicating this user agent, you basically just tell these existing spiders that they will not use that content in order to train AI. Like I said, it's a partial solution to the problem, definitely not ideal and only applies uh, to uh, Google. I guess we need something sort of a bit more generic uh, to kind of block all AI from using your content for training, of course, if you would like to block that use of your content. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.